everyone, this is Hannah, and guess what? There are now two polyphemus moth cocoons in the jar for overwintering. On January 10, I finally found another cocoon, after I had been caring for my first one for a week. This cocoon was in a low maple tree. Once I got the cocoon, I immediately noticed how small it was compared to the one at home, but it still seemed to be healthy when I shook it and was not as light as a feather as it would be if it was paralyzed. I brought the cocoon home for a closer look and removed some of the leaves that were around it. In a size comparison to the first cocoon, you can really tell how small this one is. I wonder if it'll hatch into a mini polyphemus moth next spring. On January 11, we found out that there wasn't really much of a shortage of cocoons at our neighborhood park. But not all of them are polyphemus cocoons. Looking at a bare maple tree from a distance, I saw a few dry, shriveled up leaves, and I wondered if they could have been cocoons. So, I walked over to get a closer look, only to find out that most of the shriveled leaves that looked the most like cocoons from a distance were just leaves that refused to fall off of the tree. But, one of them did have a cocoon wrapped up in it. It was a good-sized cocoon, and on a branch low enough that I could jump and grab it with my hand. So, I got the cocoon from the branch only to get a disappointment. The cocoon was as light as a feather, and, just like the other cocoon, it had been paralyzed by a parasitic wasp. This is sad to see, and unfortunately it seems to happen all the time, as many of the cocoons I have found in the past have also been paralyzed. After discarding the parasitic cocoon, I went to see if I could find any more cocoons. We usually walk around the trail of our neighborhood park. It's a very small trail, but we did not walk around this time because the clouds were getting so dark, it looked as if a severe thunderstorm could have started happening any moment and rain could have started to pour. So, we just walked around a small area of the park and looked for cocoons. I found two very bizarre cocoons. They were not polyphemus moth cocoons. The first cocoon that I spotted was very high up in a tree. It was way too high for us to reach. But, I did get a picture of it. It was not the best picture, but you can see that this cocoon looks way too small to be a polyphemus moth cocoon. The shape is also very weird. I do not think that this cocoon is a polyphemus moth cocoon. What else could it possibly be? Well, I thought that it could have been another species of moth overwintering, until I saw this. Before we left the park, I saw another cocoon, low enough for us to get it. But, there was another problem that prevented us from getting that close. The tree was standing on a steep area. If you tried to walk down, it would be easy to slip because of the leaves and straw on the ground. If you wanted to get closer to the cocoon, you would have to walk this deep area, and we couldn't do that. We were too scared that we might slip. So, I just got my camera and got a picture of this bizarre cocoon. I knew that it was not a polyphemus moth cocoon. It was way too small, but, when I zoomed in, I was even more puzzled about what it could be. Here is the picture that I got of this unusual cocoon that we found. And, although I can't tell very much from the picture, there is one thing in the picture that captures my attention. There appears to be some kind of eggs in the cocoon. I wonder what insect laid those eggs. I did see some pictures of moths online that emerge from their cocoons and lay eggs on the cocoon, but it's not easy to tell since the insect that laid the eggs is not around. I do wonder if the first cocoon, too, could have been the same as this one. Maybe it also had eggs in it, just too high to tell from a certain angle.